Hi, I'm Dr. John Duyard at LifeSpot.com. We prove the ancient medical wisdom of Ayurveda with modern science. And today I want to talk about melatonin. You know, a recent study came out in the Journal of American Medicine that seeded a lot of fears about the risk of long-term use of melatonin. Now, I want to go over what was actually in that study. And there was nothing in that study, no new science to say that somehow long-term use of melatonin is actually bad for you. It just got picked up by all the major newscasters and everybody started talking about that you shouldn't take melatonin for a long period of time. But in the study, there was literally no science to prove that. So I want to share with you the four points about that study so you're really clear about this. The first thing they said they reported was that the amount of use of melatonin has increased. From the year 2000, there was 0.4% of the population using melatonin. In the year 2018, there was 2.1% of the population using melatonin. Okay. Second thing they found out that a small percent of the population were using more than five milligrams a day, which they thought was actually more than you should actually take. But there was no science to say that if you did more, there would be a problem. There's absolutely no science to do that. And I'll cite more about that in a minute. They also showed, and this is a real legitimate thing, that the over-the-counter melatonin supplements that you buy like in the grocery store, a lot of them aren't actually you know, giving you the dose that, says, that it says on the label. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. So you don't really know how much it's taking. So that's why you got to get it from a real good, reliable source. They recommended a prescription version of that, but there are really good, reliable sources that we have. If you get one from a GMP certified uh, uh, manufacturer, which is what LifeSpa is, we actually do follow all the FDA regulations for that. And you know, you have a really good product. That's really important. And then also they said that due to the growing popular popularity to avoid long-term use, they were suggesting people use less than five milligrams. But once again, there was no science to say what would happen if you did it for long-term at a higher dose. Now, I'm not really a big fan of long-term use of high dose of melatonin. I use it as a med medicine to get on, get better, get off at higher doses. And I'm a big fan of microdosing melatonin. That's a big part of what I want to talk about today. But before I even go there, let me talk about the fact that that one uh, report from the National Center of Complementary and Integrated Health, they said that there's no conclusive evidence on the risk of long-term use of, of melatonin. They actually said that uh, short-term use appears to be safe, but info on long-term safety is lacking. They did say that there are some mild side effects that are reported with melatonin, long-term or short-term, and that was with headaches, uh, side effects can see things like mild headaches, dizziness, nausea, and even sleepiness. So really not that much. Now, when you use what I like to use, which is low-dose melatonin, you actually find that you're in really, um, getting dosages that are, I mean, micro dosing. One study showed that 0.3 milligrams works just as well as one milligram. And another study showed that 0.5 milligrams worked just as well as five milligrams. So what I found in my practice and what the research is now showing is that melatonin dosing is really something that is individual. And you really need to find the exact precise dose that is for you. So in our low dose melatonin, you, I give our dose, it's, it's 0.1, um, milligrams per one drop. So if you take one drop of that stuff, you're getting 0.1 milligram. You can't even buy that in the grocery store. And what I always suggest to my patients is to take one drop per five nights and then see how you feel. Then take two drops for five nights. That's 0.2 milligrams. It's such a micro dose. And you keep increasing every five nights by increasing by one drop till you get the desired dose. And when you get to that desired dose, stay there. Now, I did a podcast with a melatonin researcher named Paula Witt Entreby from Duquesne University, and she did research and showed that not only melatonin actually reversed breast cancer and, and, and osteoporosis, which is amazing, you need to go to that podcast and take a look at that, but she also told me that melatonin doesn't suppress the natural production of your own, so it's not classically a hormone. Because by definition, a hormone will naturally suppress your own production, right? Of whatever you're taking, you take a thyroid hormone, you're not gonna make any more of your own because your body is saying, hey, I got the hormone, I don't need to make any of my own. And that's exactly what begins to happen, right? So when you take melatonin at a, uh, at a lower dose, you're gonna get what you're taking, but in short order, it'll encourage the natural production of your own. It doesn't suppress your production is what she told me. It encourages your production. So that's what's really neat about microdosing of melatonin is you actually encourage your natural production. As you get older, over 50, you're gonna produce less melatonin than you did when you were in your 20s and 30s and 40s. 
Nature's got a way of getting rid of us as we get older, and one of those ways is to stop producing melatonin. Don't forget, melatonin is not a sleep hormone. It's actually a molecule that connects your biological clocks with nature's circadian rhythms, and it's been doing that for three billion years. It's also the number one most powerful antioxidant in your body that has research on just about every organ and organ system in your body, including boosting your own detoxifying organs, or, uh, uh, enzymes like glutathione in your liver, superoxide dismutase, catalase. It actually helps the body do that, reboots your, your microbiome, supports immunity in a powerful way, um, and it turns off all the alarm bells so your body's not constantly in a fight or flight uh, reaction, which is the short list of things that it can actually do. So when you take a low-dose melatonin and you find the dose that you like, and then all of a sudden that dose sort of starts to not work anymore, don't take more. Start going from five drops, if that was your desired dose, to four, to three, to two, to one. And then eventually, if you're under 50, you can just get off of it and use it as a reset of your biological clocks and circadian rhythms. If you're old, like me, then you can take a little bit of a low-dose melatonin to sort of hack the aging process and just get enough melatonin to encourage your natural production so you don't go into a melatonin drought or melatonin debt as you get older because there's really benefit, a lot of benefit, to having the right amount of melatonin. Now, I do use higher dose of melatonin when I'm actually treating certain imbalances in Ayurveda that I might you know, look at in my practice, but for the most part, for most folks, I would highly recommend using and starting with microdosing, so you can find the individual dose, because lots of us are way more or less sensitive to melatonin than others. So finding out what your sensitivity is will give you the ability to kind of titrate up or titrate down the exact dose that you need. But don't get scared off by the fact that these, that, uh, these the news media put out a lot of fear, like long-term use of melatonin was really dangerous, when that study didn't have any science that was new that said, yeah, we discovered that long-term use of melatonin has actually got a problem, it wasn't. They just found that more people were taking melatonin at higher doses, and therefore they were concerned, and, they, and then they put out this report that was interpreted by the news people, people that there was dangers in taking long-term use, but there isn't. Now, I'm not a fan of long-term use of high dose, I'm a fan of microdosing, where you really are always on the safe side, where it naturally encourages your own production. And that's exactly why a lot of folks, when they take melatonin, they feel bed, they feel good with it, they sleep better, and then all of a sudden it starts to stop working. So they, what do they do? It's America. We take more, right? Now you're taking way more than you need. And yes, when you take more than you need in melatonin, it can actually kind of have a reverse effect and not give you the benefit that you need. So you go, oh my God, that stuff doesn't work, and you stop taking it. So there you have it, all the information about a melatonin that you need. Go to my website at lifespot.com, check out the article with all the science behind this. You can read uh, and get links to the actual study that put out this, all this message about long-term use of melatonin. But I think it's really important to know the facts and the option, which no one talks about, of microdosing melatonin, getting the same benefit that you would get high at a high dose, but without you know, any risk of long-term issues particularly at a higher dose. All right, thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.